The Lincoln Continental needs no introduction, as it has been in production for over 55 years over a series of 10 generations. This 1999 Continental is represented as a mid-cycle refresh for the 9th generation that comprised of the 1995 to 2002 model years, with the 1998 model year being the facelift that would stay with the car until its demise on July 26, 2002. There would not be another Continental until the 2017 model year. This 1999 Lincoln Continental is painted in midnight gray clear coat metallic and features a two-tone light and medium graphite leather interior that is included with the luxury appearance package. This is a very well equipped Continental with all the option boxes ticked for the model year including the Lincoln Rescue which is similar to GM's OnStar service. From 1958 until 2002 all Lincoln Continentals have been assembled at the Wixom assembly plant in Wixom, Michigan. The current 10th generation Continental is the first time in 44 years that a Continental has not produ been produced at that plant. And this Continental is front wheel drive with power coming from the 4.6 liter Intec dual overhead cam 32 valve V8 engine. It creates 275 horsepower at 5,750 RPM, 275 pound feet of torque at 4,750 RPM. It is good for 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7.5 seconds with a 0 to 100 mile per hour time in 19.2 seconds. Quarter miles reached in 15.6 seconds at 94 miles per hour with the top speed limited to 118 miles per hour. And fuel capacity for the Continental is 20 US gallons and it consumes 5.6 gallons per 100 miles driven. Total estimated driving range is 360 miles with EPA fuel economy ratings for 15 miles per gallon city, 23 miles per gallon highway, and 18 miles per gallon combined. On my 20 mile mixed driving test, I averaged 16.7 miles per gallon. And the sole available transmission is a 4 speed electronically controlled AX4N automatic. The chief designer of the 9th generation FN74 Continental was designed by Fritz Mayhew in 1991 and was largely based on the Taurus Sable Ford FN9 platform. The Continental maintained its position as a more sporty front wheel drive variant to the town car until the Lincoln LS took full hold of the division sports sedan in 2000. Sadly, due to declining sales following the introduction of the LS in 1999 and with the LS Continental and town car in the same price range, the decision was made to discontinue the Continental with no official direct replacement. Around the rear, styling changed with the disappearance of the large full width Mark 8 esque light bar for more traditional tail lamps, styled in a similar fashion of the much more expensive and up-level luxury Jaguar XJ. Rear end styling was typical Lincoln with drop down deck lid that contained a chrome license plate surround flanked and with darkened reverse lamp housings and a large chrome plinth on top with the red Lincoln star badge in the center. As one walks along the profile of the Continental, it is easy to forget that it was based on the more run-of-the-mill Taurus family sedan, as much of the sheet metal is unique to the car. Chrome graces the belt line, window trim, and door handles. The Continental sits on a 109-inch wheelbase with an overall length of 208.5 inches. Steering features driver selectable effort levels and is variable rate vehicle speed sensitive rack and pinion with 2.86 turns lock to lock. Wheels are 16-inch polished chrome 6-spoke aluminum with 225-60 R16 all-season touring tires. Brakes are four-wheel ventilated disc with four-channel ABS, all-speed traction control with 11.57-inch rotors up front and 10.1-inch rotors in the rear. Alright, and driving a 20-year-old Continental is actually nicer than one would think. The ride is firm yet comfortable. Steering effort is really, really good depending on how you have the steering effort control set on. I just have it on normal. But overall, I love the way this vehicle rides and drives. 
that Intec V8 has really good power output, and it seems that you have torque at almost any RPM. Wixom was Ford's most profitable plant with almost 6.7 million automobiles produced. It was demolished in 2012 as part of the Way Forward plan, and a Menards outlet currently sits on the site. And looking up front, the facelifted Continental shares more styling cues with the larger rear drive Panther based town car. The large front chrome waterfall grille flows almost seamlessly from the hood shut lines and blends very elegantly into the large clear lens halogen headlamps. Headlamps are complex multi reflector halogen lights with integrated incandescent turn indicators and front cornering lamps. Alright, we're accelerating onto an entrance ramp, and as you can see, the, the Continental actually has some really good get up and go, and I love that growl from the V8. Really, really sounds good. And we're just driving on the open highway, open interstate, going about 65 miles an hour. Of course, it is cold, and we just had a big snow come in, but right now we're just getting the rain part of it. But the in interior is very comfortable. It's a really smooth, nice, firm ride very comfortable, it's very sporty and very luxurious, fitting of the Continental name. Alright, let's take a look inside. Of course, this vehicle does not have smart key access, but we do have keyless remote entry, as well as a driver select system for the memory. You've also got your uh, key code entry pad on the door. And of course, opening the door reveals a very, very nice and very well equipped, very well crafted interior, especially for this era. The two-tone seats are a really nice touch. The interior does feature genuine bird's eye maple trim, chrome accents, door mounted seat controls, heated exterior mirrors, and of course you have power windows, power mirrors, and power door locks, all as standard equipment. This area of Continental has always been my absolute favorite. Light controls, as well as your panel dim controls on the dashboard, lumbar support, lower mounted on the seat, same as on the passenger side. And speaking of the seats, they are a very thick, very supportive, very cushy leather couch, armchair, however you want to say. Very, very comfortable. All right, and let's pan through the interior and show more details. As you can see, nice fluid power assisted steering with a leather and wood wrap steering wheel. Does feature multifunction controls with cruise controls on the left hand side of the steering wheel. And on the right hand side, you have your audio controls and climate controls. And front and center is Lincoln's virtual projected image cluster. It is a striking system that features reflected instrument panel on a black housing with warning lamps behind. You've also got this comprehensive trip computer. It has a ton of different menus, so I've sped up the video for the sake of time in an already relatively long video. But there's a lot of information that can be stored and accessed through this trip computer. As you can see, the gauges are crystal clear and very easy to read. Moving over the top of the dash, you'll see a matte grainy texture. That's for the anti-glare reflective, anti-reflective surface. A really cool feature is these passenger air vents that actually can slide out a little bit. I've never seen that on another vehicle before. And on top of the dash, you have your multiple buttons for your trip computer selection, as well as an analog clock. You've also got the premium Alpine AM FM cassette player with CD player, single zone automatic climate control, and your heated seat controls. Down below, you have your large console shifter. Dual cup holders that pop out of the center console armrest. You've also got a multi-level console. You do have the six disc CD changer magazine inside the armrest. You've also got wired provisions for the cellular telephone that was included with the Lincoln Rescue package. Said telephone is not actually in the vehicle anymore, but the cradle and dock are actually in this little lift up panel here. And as you can see, overall, the interior of this Continental is a very nice, a very luxurious place to be. Looking overhead, you have an automatic dimming rearview mirror with compass display, as well as reading lights. On the driver's side sun visor, a three-channel home link universal garage door opener. You've also got sunglasses holder, power sunroof control, and another uh, storage area for your garage door opener. 
illuminated vanity mirrors with adjustable brightness on the lights. And the sun visor does swing out, but it does not slide. And overhead, you have overhead assist handles. And just being honest here, I've been waiting for over two years to be able to review one of these cars. And one finally came my way. It's a really, really nice example, and I was really, really thrilled to be able to get the chance to review this. And even drive it. I've not driven one of these in a long time. Alright, let's take a look at the rear seat. As one would expect, the rear seat is very nice and very comfortable. It's a very wide seat. It does seat three across. Unfortunately, the rear seat does not feature any of the warm bird's eye maple trim. As stated before, it does seat three across. It does have three point belts for all passenger seating areas. However, it does not fold. There is no kind of folding seat or any kind of trunk pass through. Lincoln Star Embroidery. Full down center armrest with integrated cup holders is a nice option. And overhead you do have overhead reading lights, coat hook and assist handles, seat back mat pockets, a slide out ashtray on the back seat bottom cushion, and positional climate control vents. And as far as driving goes, I've said pretty much all that can be said. I, I don't know what else to say other than I'm really, really impressed. I used to have a Taurus from this same era, and this car and the Taurus feel nothing alike. Uh, they may be based on the same platform, but these two cars are completely different. Continental's much better. Alright, and there are several ways to open the trunk. You can press the trunk release button on the driver's side door. It also locks with the key. You can also go old school and just put the key in the keyhole and turn the key and it will unlatch it. Or you can press and hold the key fob button. Very huge, very large trunk with a low lift over height. Luggage capacity is 18.4 cubic feet. It is fully carpeted, fully lined, and insulated. It does have fuel cutoff, jack and tools, and spare tire storage underneath the mat.
All right, and this does conclude this in-depth walk-around review. If you liked this video and would like to see more like it, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And of course, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.